Welcome, welcome on this wonderful, beautiful, sunny, sunny Sunday morning. Uh, so good to have you here on this wonderful day. Let's take a moment to go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing upon us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. I pray that you will look down upon us as we lift our voices in praise to you. As we open our hearts to, li to listen to your word and allow your word to speak to us. And now, Lord, we thank you for the wonderful privilege to come and remember your great grace and sacrifice that we might have the hope of life eternal. Now, Lord, we ask your blessing upon this service here today. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's sing together our next hymn of praise. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. <laughs>
Count your many blessings. come to our communion time today to remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us upon the cross of Calvary. Let's stand as we prepare our hearts for uh, through a word of prayer and then we invite you to partake of your communion, communion during the singing of our song, Bind Us Together Lord. If you did not pick up your communion, feel free to do so during the singing of our song, and then you may partake of your communion any time during the singing of that song. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you that you are our hope and that only you control America and the nations of this world. We pray that our prayers today are in accordance with your will. Lord, thank you for coming to us and showing us how to be a servant when you were here as human. We pray that if we are one of those who are fortunate, that it won't lead us to be unattentive to those who need help. Help us to stay committed to the spreading of your gospel, especially to those who are reluctant to believe in your truth. Thank you for the fellowship of Norco Christian Church and the motivation of Pastor Alton. Help us to use our talents to help each other here at our church and in your kingdom. Thank you for our veterans, current military and police, and we pray that respect for them will not wane due to certain, a certain culture of ungratefulness. Thank you, Jesus, for your unconditional love and your ultimate sacrifice of your body and blood for our forgiveness and salvation. We love you, Lord. Amen.
seated. Oh, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's uh, been a while since we've been outdoors, and uh, it looks like our winter weather is finally passed on for this year <laughs> and so uh, we'll probably be outdoors for a while until it gets too hot <laughs> so it's so good to to have you here um, <coughs> let me read from second Peter the third chapter beginning in verse 14 to begin with today so that you have something in mind as I begin my sermon today. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do other scriptures, to their own destruction. Therefore, dear, dear friends, since you already know this, be on guard so that you may be carried away by the error, may not be carried away by the error of lawless men, and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And so ends the book of Peter. Um, I thought I would preach one last sermon with that passage of scripture. I began my sermon and decided I need to take two weeks to do that. So uh, I am just going to talk with you through verse 16 and uh, leave the last two verses for next week. Shine, we look forward to this. We look forward to this. What are we looking forward to? Now, Chris, Chris is here today. Uh, Chris is Liz's brother has always looked forward to his birthday. So much so that the family would have to set rules for him. And that is, he could not talk about his birthday until one month before his birthday arrived. Otherwise, he would talk about it all year long. Now, our grandson, Ezekiel, had a birthday on April 1st. Yes, he was born on April Fool's Day. 
the bad thing about that is Ezekiel doesn't always get to celebrate his birthday on, on his birth date. In, in fact, it was almost two and a half weeks after his birthday that he finally got to celebrate his birthday with some of his family and friends this year. When they did finally celebrate it, they went to a place that he and his friends could race go-karts. Uh, there's a place in Krona called K1 Speed that um, Ezekiel took his friends. Ezekiel turned 10 years old this year. He was looking forward to the fact that his birthday would, his birth age would no longer be in the single digits. <laughs> uh, for almost three weeks he looked forward to that event. I, I heard him remind his father several times that his birthday party was coming soon. Uh, in fact, last week uh, he heard his father say that his father was going to go to a car show and, and once again Zeke reminded him that his birthday was that day. Was he going to go to the car show and not his birthday? Well, his dad reminded him that the car show would be over before his birthday party began. We look forward to birthdays. Well, until we get too old. <laughs> Kids look forward to birthdays. Now, now, I don't know about you, but I think it would be wonderful if, if every Christian were looking forward to their birthday in heaven with such intensity. That's what Peter encourages us to look forward to. Our birthday in heaven. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, let me talk about three things that we need to understand if we are looking forward to our birthday in heaven. Number one, we should make every effort to be found spotless. Now you say, well, that's impossible. Well, let's talk about that for a moment. Peter says, so then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless. Those are not my words. Peter said that. Make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Now, now let's talk about the phrase, make every effort for a moment. Now, not long ago, Ralph Van Hall told me that he could do 100 push-ups in less than 10 minutes. And I thought that was pretty commendable. I, and so I went home to see how many push-ups I could do. I did 10 of them. I, I pushed myself until I could barely lift my body on the 10th push-up. I made every effort to complete 10 push-ups and paid for it in pain for the next month. <laughs> I haven't made any effort to do that again since. <laughs> but that's the word that Peter uses here to encourage us to make every last ditch effort to be found spotless. Peter realizes that being found spotless and blameless was going to require some work and discipline. It wasn't something that was going to be easy and painless. But he encourages us to do something that was possible. He was not asking us to do the impossible. Peter is not telling us to do something that, that we can't do. 
He wasn't telling the person who can barely do 10 push-ups to do 100. So what is Peter encouraging us to do when he says make every effort? Some people would argue that I am preaching that we are saved by works instead of by grace. And and I realize that may sound that way from what I have just said to you. But let me remind you that those are the words of Peter, not mine. And so before we get stirred up about being saved by grace or being saved by works, let's talk about what Peter meant when he said to be found spotless. To be found spotless and blameless. Now this word that that Peter uses for spotless is the same word that he used in his first letter when he spoke of Christ in 1 Peter 1.19 where he said, With the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The word spotless here, in, in the third chapter of Second Peter, is the exact same word that Peter used in 1 Peter 1.19, where the New International Version translates it, without defect. A lamb without defect. Have you ever ordered something through the mail and it came in pieces and it wasn't supposed to be in pieces. (laughs) Uh, It it wasn't many months ago that my wife ordered some shampoo and hair conditioner online. The bottles that the shampoo and the conditioner came in were the type of bottles that had the you push the nozzle down and the shampoo came out, the nozzle. Well, you know, I, I, I can never figure out shipping companies. I, I, I don't know if these guys do their own shipping or whether they hire somebody else to do it for them or what happens. But they don't pack very well if you've noticed. I I don't know how much you may order, but we get quite a bit of stuff through the mail system, through the shipping system. Uh, Those those two bottles, and they were pretty big bottles, came in in a box that was three times the volume of those two bottles. And there was no other padding in that box. Those bottles just rattled around in the box. Anyway, when those two bottles arrived at our door, the shampoo was leaking through the cracks of the box. I opened the box and the weight of the bottles rolling around in the box had caused the shampoo to push the the levers up and down and The shampoo all squirted out all over the box. And the cap now on the on the shampoo was now cracked, which caused the shampoo to leak even more. Now, needless to say, we we contacted the company where we bought the items and found out what we needed to do to return them. They sent us some more. The next time they came, they were packed better. But when those items got to us the first time, there was a defect. There was a defect. Peter tells us that since we're looking forward to this, meaning the things that he had previously talked about, We're looking forward to new heaven and a new earth, he said, in the verse previous to it. The home of righteousness. 
So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Spotless. Be found without defect. Let me tell you a story. Um, a young man by the name of Dick Axel, A X S E L L E, was born in Ashland, Virginia. He was one of several hundred people who was to participate in a marathon uh, put on by the Richmond newspaper in October of 1982. He was eight years old, and so his distance for an eight-year-old was to be five miles. Now, that didn't sound so awful. My young grandson has run almost that far in marathons. But Dick Axel was a young man who had been born with spina bifida, a congenital birth defect that damages the nervous system. And Dick had never been able to walk without leg braces and crutches. Even though he had no feeling in his legs from his knees down, he was forever challenging his limitations. And with the extraordinary support of his family, he trained hard for that marathon and finished those grueling five miles amid generous applause. The following year in 1983, Dake Axel completed the 13.1 miles in the marathon and the screws in his braces had to be replaced afterwards. That's what it means to make every effort. Make every effort. And so we should bear in mind that the Lord's patience means salvation for us. When we make every effort, the Lord's patience means salvation for us. Bear in mind, Peter says, that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Now this term, bear in mind, is an interesting phrase. The word itself in the Greek means to lead the way. Or to be a leader. Just to illustrate how the word is used in the Bible in other places. In the book of Acts, we find Paul and Barnabas in the city of Lystra. And there they heal a crippled man who has been crippled from birth. He had never walked. He listened to Paul speak. He listened to Paul speak about Christ and, and the resurrection. And evidently, in the middle of the sermon, Paul looks directly at the man and perceived that the man had great faith, and he called out to the man, Stand up on your feet. And at that point, the man jumped up and began to walk. Here was a man who had never walked before. That was a true miracle. When the crowd saw that Paul had healed this man, they shouted, The gods have come down from the from the skies in human form. So they gave names to Barnabas and Saul. They called Barnabas Zeus 
And the Bible says, And Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. He was the chief speaker. Now, chief speaker. Luke, Luke uses the exact same word that Peter uses here. We translate Luke's word because he was the chief speaker. Peter, we translate his bear in mind. And so those, those two phrases are exactly the same. Bear in mind. Lead the way with your thinking. Peter wants us to know that we lead the way when we bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. God is not willing that any should perish. Now that's just the thing that unbelievers and diso disobedient believers are counting on. And God is not willing that any should perish. Now, the glitch is a statement they ignore that comes afterwards. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance means to turn. It means to turn around and go the other way. That's what Peter is trying to emphasize here in in 2 Peter 3. Make every effort to be found without defect. Make every effort to be found spotless. And since in reality, none of us can be found that way in God's eyes without Jesus. He is the one who will make us spotless, blameless, and at peace with God. We need to make every effort to attach our lives to His. But there's one last point here. We should understand that ignorant and unstable people distort the Scriptures. Now Peter says about Paul. Remember he said that Paul had written about these things. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Now let's talk about Paul for a moment, or Paul's writings for a moment. Now, the thing that you should know is that Paul was not one of the original 12 that Jesus called. He was not even the 13th. In fact, Paul writes in, in 2 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 8, he, he's talking about the, the appearances of Christ after his resurrection. And then he says, Then he appeared to James and to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. And Paul was not one of the original apostles, but he calls himself an apostle in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians of that same 15th chapter when he says, For I am the least of the apostles. He says, I'm the least, but I, he includes himself in them. And do not ever deserve to be called an apostle, although he called himself one, because I persecuted the church of God. 
Paul had repented. He had turned his life around. And Peter confirms that godly position of Paul here in 2 Peter by telling us, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters. This indicates that, that Peter had already read several of Paul's letters by the time he wrote 2 Peter. Because he said he writes the same way in all his letters. There must have been more than one that Peter had read. The word in Greek is actually epistole, uh, which is translated in our English epistle. Epistle, uh, we often call the letters of Peter and Paul epistles. The epistles of Paul, the epistles of Peter, the epistles of John. That just means the letters. So Peter confirms the authority of Paul as an apostle. If it were not for Peter's confirmation of that fact, there would be people who would still argue Paul's authority as an apostle. And, and we might have fewer books in the New Testament than we have. But, but Peter's confirmation is here, and Paul does a very important job of reconciling Jesus as the Messiah. It is the books of Romans and Galatians and Colossians that Paul wrote, and even First and Second Corinthians, that Paul helps us harmonize Jesus with the Old Testament. Peter solidifies Paul's authority as an apostle by stating he writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand. And then Peter states this, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do other scriptures to their own destruction. Now, now let me come to the defense of those ignorant and unstable people. I, I do not believe that Peter is referring to, to their psychological nature. These teachers were probably learned and intelligent human beings. However, I believe that Peter was referring to the godly spiritual nature of these people. In a spiritual sense, they were ignorant and unstable. Ignorant because they denied the second coming of Christ, which Paul wrote about in 1 Thessalonians 4, that he'd come in the clouds and take us to be with him. And, and I should probably take a moment to say that Peter's terminology here, a new heaven and a new earth that, that he used a little earlier, doesn't mean that God is going to create a new earth and start all over again. It was Peter's way of saying there won't be any of the old left behind. The old will be gone. And everything will be new, including the lives of those who believe. Now, the ignorant deny these things, is what Peter says. And they are unstable because they are not walking with God. They deny that God is going to make all things new. Therefore, we have the freedom to live life any way we want to live it, and we can define it for ourselves. Because we don't need to be accountable to God. 
That's a definite picture of our world today. Everything continues as it has from the beginning. So eat, drink, and be merry. And somehow, if he does come, I'll, I'll hitchhike to heaven. I, uh, I went this uh, a couple of weeks ago to my son's uh, honor dinner in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, his his father-in-law went, and and his his mother-in-law went also. His father-in-law asked me how I was getting around in Atlanta, Georgia, when I went over there. Uh, Dwayne had rented a car, and 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 Lenny had rented a car, and and so Lenny asked me, "How are you getting around?" I said, "I'm hitchhiking," <laughs> which I meant I'm riding with you. <laughs> uh, but but that's what people want to do on their way to heaven. That's what a, a lot of people are planning to do. My grandma was a wonderful Christian. Why, I, I was good friends of the preacher in town. I talked to him all the time. When he came into 6th Street Deli to eat. <laughs> and if they don't say it out loud... They place their hope there anyway. Now, how do I know that? Well, when people ask me, how are you? And I reply, happy on my way to heaven. Often their response is, I'm right behind you. But they haven't done anything to let me know that. That I know of. Maybe, maybe there are things in secret that I don't know about. I'm right behind you. And th these are often the people that Peter wrote this letter for, but who aren't reading it. These are often the people who are not making every effort. These are the people whom Peter calls ignorant and unstable. They're not leaning on God. They're walking without him. Now, I, I have been at a challenging time in my life, physically speaking, these last two and a half years. Uh, breaking my leg started that challenging journey. I am still recovering from that event in my life. On top of the broken leg, however, that had to be surgically repaired, I was diagnosed with leukemia. And then the doctors in charge finally convinced me to get a bone density test, and they diagnosed me with osteoporosis. And just last month, my hematologist confirmed that I had chronic kidney failure. Now, at this point, I don't believe any of those are close to being acute, but they are there. And so I try to do my best to stay as healthy as I can under that situation. Uh, in in addition to taking 16 to 18 different vitamins every day, I try to walk as much as I can because my endocrinologist, I, I used that term the other day and somebody looked at me like, is that a word? <laughs> but but uh, they're the one that that takes care of my osteoporosis, my bone density stuff. Uh, told me I needed to do weight-bearing exercises, so I've been trying to hike as much as I can every 
day or four or five times a week at least. And, and so I, I carry with me a walking stick. Because sometimes my balance isn't as good as it used to be with my broken leg and, and, and my other knee isn't that good either. And so, so I, need, I need something to walk with me. Something that will help me keep my balance. Now sometimes I just carry that stick for protection. But sometimes I use it to lean upon. When my balance isn't secure. Now when it comes to our spiritual nature. There is not anyone who can walk spotless and blameless. Unless we have God to lean upon. When we walk through life. We can walk with stability only when we have Jesus to walk with us. And we can lean upon him when life gets tough. We can then look forward to this new heaven and new earth, the home of righteousness. It's invitation time. Let's talk to God for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope that you've given us that we can look forward to this. And as we look forward to the wonderful gift of life that you've given us, we can shine while we live here on earth. Thank you, Lord, for the fact that we can come to you and lean upon you. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have a decision to make for Christ, come as we stand and sing together. Father, I adore you. be seated. Once again, thank you so much for your faithful attendance and your faithfulness to Jesus. That's part of making every effort to be found spotless. Um, a couple of things. Number one is uh, Bible study. Uh, there will not be Bible study this week or next week. Um, the dates are in your bulletin, but I think it's the 8th of May that we'll begin. Um, we're going to begin the, the series of The Chosen from the very beginning. 
and we're going to take you through uh, season four. So um, that'll be a, a, a good journey. And so uh, we hope that you'll come and have fellowship with us and uh, spend some time afterwards uh, when we have some time uh, to go to dinner and uh, fellowship together. We hope that you will take that time on Wednesday evenings and come spend with us. So that's the one thing uh, that I wanted to let you know about. Uh, I, I will be gone uh, just for three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I will not be gone on Sunday. Um, uh, n not next week, n or not this week, but next week. Um, and, um, and then I'll be here for the rest of the month. And then we will be gone to Colorado the first, uh, or the second and third Sundays of, of June. And so uh, we, we may even be back for that third Sunday, but I'll come and sit in a pew and listen to Art preach. <laughs> uh, if I get back, I, I, I don't know what plans I have. I'll make them on the way. Somebody says, you have a plan? I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I have a partial plan. Uh, it, it takes me up the, through the first week. The second week, I'm not sure about yet. Um, so anyway, that's what's coming up uh, for summertime. And uh, so we'll look forward to that. We'll, we'll be having some events here the 4th of July and some things we'll be putting that in the bullets and letting you know about all of those things. So, um, also, yeah, I wanted to mention uh, that that Sean has been in the hospital with a heart attack and uh, had some stents put in, so um, we want to keep him in prayer. What? I just got word I have to go get him now. You're, you're supposed to go get him right now, huh? Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, that's good that, you, that he's coming home. Uh, they don't keep them long for anything anymore. <laughs> so uh, it's a it's a different world than when I grew up. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much. Uh, keep Bill in, in prayer. He's not here today because he hurt his back. And so uh, he's not here. Uh, so yeah, and keep Paula and her sister in prayer. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. God bless you. What a beautiful day. Let's stand and sing together our closing song, Majesty. Majesty, worship His majesty.
God bless you. Have a wonderful week.